There you go. So, I got this coming out output. This is going to my bridge rectifier I made with two transit or uh, resistors that are making a voltage divider and an output, and it works fine. Um, uh, there's more efficient ways to do it. So, as of right now, this is working. This will power the lights. This is what I used the other day on my other video. Um, the plan, though, is, is to put a rectifier in and then go to this other unit. Now, apparently, people are using these for wind turbines. And what they do is um, it goes out and it goes into a unit. And the unit takes the voltage ranges, and it's in capacitors. It's it's really weird. It's hard to explain. It creates like a bank of storage. And it shoves it through this limiting circuit, which is an IC. So, you have to have a minimum of a, of this spinning enough to create the minimum, which is 12, 12 volts, and then up. So, the output will always be 12 volts on the other unit, which should be fine because this spinning at idle is more than... It will spin this more than 1,000 RPM, and at 1,000 I was getting 19 volts, so... We should be awesome. And the unit will take up to, I think it's 115 volts, and drop it down to 12. So, without uh, overheating and stuff. So, you know, it can take a lot more stress than in this. I don't know, we're going to try this, see how long it lasts, see if it lasts fine, I don't know. Alright guys, so... Here is all the frame questions, because I've been asked a lot about this. How will it clear? How will it fit? Blah, blah, blah. So, the frame that this is going in, this will represent the front down tube and the seat post tube. Alright, and if you're looking at it, um, I left this flat as a reference, too, so that I can make sure. So, when you're looking at it, the bike would be sitting like this dead flat straight in front of you so that's how it would be sitting but um yeah I got about a half inch between the motor and that for the uh, g motor that's going to generate power half inch here and about three eighths in here so should be more than enough uh, no problems I did uh, wire this in like I said and here we go and I got the uh, all set but um yeah i mean this is where we're at and i don't want anyone to get confused with this but this is the lead edge of the back side and you know technically the tubing's out here but i just don't want anyone to get confused because this is a small tube and i just use this as the side since this is what i need to know so but anyways, yeah, if you're looking at it, this would be your back supports to your uh, rear wheel. And uh, that's how it'll sit in the frame. So yeah, I did make one of these. Uh, it ended up being one eighth of an inch longer than the original piece was behind this that I cut off. So, I mean, all that perfect. And up above, on the frame itself, I got almost three quarters of an inch to the spark plug. The way that it's set into the gas tank and stuff. So, this should be great. Yeah, but this is representing the crank. It's actually the same size as the one that's in there. So, all in all, this is, uh, it's going to work out pretty well. So, alright, I hope that clears up some of the confusion about the frame. But yeah, this was my, uh, I, I did a little bit of uh, math here and uh, got it lined up to what I need. So, anyways, alright, peace.
So anyways, I been thinking about this. It's been wanting a plasma cutter, a CNC one. So I mean, I'm going to uh print one up. So that's what I've been uh, doing the past couple days. I am making uh stepper motor mounts and all the linear rail mounts and all that stuff at the moment. So but it a little bit of time. I think uh, here's one of the trolleys. Oh, all this in general, I think, is about 30 hours so far. So, printing. But anyways, yeah, I'm getting to it. We're going to get this going so I can uh, cut some more parts easier with a plasma cutter. I've been wanting to do this for a while, so. Eh. It's time. <sighs>